Were you going on campus for the community band that you were a member of? Yes. So you were going on campus during that time? Yes. Did anyone say anything? No. Did you have any concerns that you would be escorted off campus or arrested for violating this letter? A little bit, but after a while it got to be where it's like nobody's here and nobody's really paying attention. So it's like it doesn't matter. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Watching Adams podcast. I'm Danny Ladoni. Today we're joined by Jimmy Dipmar. Jimmy is a non-traditional student who contacted me because he had an experience being banned from the Adams State University campus. Jimmy was actually a student at Adams State and graduated in 2009, so he's an alumni and community member, and he had one particular incident with Ken Marquez, Vice President of Student Affairs, who banned him from campus over what Jimmy believed was a sarcastic remark regarding the termination of Police Chief Joel Schultz. You can go back and listen to the podcast with Joel Schultz if you'd like to do that and then come back here. I've also posted the documents that Jimmy was served and subsequent correspondence about him being banned so that you can look those over as well. Lastly, I just want to note what's remarkable about this podcast is that Jimmy was banned in January of 2015 from the Adam State campus and spent the next year essentially defying the ban by continuing to go to campus and community events without incident, which calls into question the whole purpose and enforcement of these ban orders that are allegedly for campus safety. Without further ado, here is Jimmy Dittmar on the Watching Adams podcast. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Dittmar. I started going to Adams in 07, uh, August, the fall semester, uh, after transferring out here. I applied for work-study positions. One year, one of the work-study positions was I was assisting the police department there on campus. And my job was uh, to go write tickets for students that didn't have the proper tag or if they didn't have one or not and so I got to know Alicia Riggs and I afterwards I got to know Alicia a little bit better I had read on Facebook that she had pulled over uh, the head basketball coach and it was reported that he had said do you know who you're dealing with mm-hmm. and that was written on facebook and stuff yeah according and to joel's podcast which people can go back and listen to joel schultz described the situation as i understand it as saying something like you better watch your ass yeah and um as the statement given by the basketball coach to the to the officer as according to officer riggs that she reported and when they fired chief schultz i went to ken marquez and i said why why i wanted to know why and they said well it, it's under inv- under investigation we can't tell you anything ken marquez is the vice president of student affairs yeah and he so happens to be one that uh, i guess can fire and hire the chiefs um and police officers there and so he wouldn't tell me and then and you were a student at this time i had graduated at this time because i think this was after 09 that this incident happened and then um in let's see january of 2015 i remember on a friday reading the paper and seeing that there had been a gunfire incident near the campus and i'm i'm a bit of a guy that kind of likes to rub people the wrong way so I went to Ken's office and I, I, I told him, Ken, you know, I'm thinking it's a really good idea that you fired Chief Schultz when you did. After all, there hasn't been a single incident of gunfire on or near the campus since he's been gone. And then I, oh, wait a minute, there was. And at that point he said, are you trying to get my goat? I said, well, I'm just thinking the students must really be safe here. And so you were being sarcastic. Very now, sarcastic. Is this, the, just, is this the first time you've interacted with Ken in this way? No. Um, I've had other interactions with him, and uh, but I've been wanting to find out what happened, why. I'm but as far as the really thick, heavy car- sarcasm, that was the very first time I had done that. And just as kind of a point of reference, you'd graduated from Adam State when? Um, in May of 2009. Okay. So this was about six years later. You've been a community member for a long time here in Alamosa. Yes. 
And so you would, how often would you go to the university after you graduated? Not, not very often. Um, I would go a few times to the football games. I would get involved at the Veterans Club and try to go as often as I could to that. So you that know, day you were the, in Ken's office? Yes. Did you make an appointment? You just walk in? I just walked in and, and asked his secretary if he was available and if I could speak to him. And she went and uh, knocked on his door and asked. And um, then she turned around and said, he, he's available. So he let you in? You didn't barge in? No. Okay. No. I knocked on the door and asked her first and then basically just to get permission and, you know, do things correctly. Um, and your intention was to tease him and maybe get more information about why Schultz was fired or just kind of to register that you thought he shouldn't have been fired and the campus was worse off as a result or what help me understand. Uh, yeah just uh, mostly to just rib him as far as the gunfire incident and and to say that his firing of chief schultz was wrong Do i felt it was wrong joel to be a personal friend uh yes okay and you know joel outside of adam state yes um i knew him from uh, Living Water Bible Fellowship. We had a uh, really good relationship there. So what but, was Ken's response or what happened next? Are you trying to get my goat? Goat. Yeah. So that phrase is like, are you trying to agitate me or get under my skin? Yeah. And, I, and that's when I said, well, I'm just thinking that the students must really feel safe around here. And that's when he turned to his secretary and told her to call the police. And he asked me to leave. And I left. You sort of freely of your own will. You weren't escorted off campus. No, I left of my own free will, got in my vehicle, went home. Would you say that you were creating a public disturbance? Uh, no, because there in Richardson's Hall, you know, I did it all in his office. Right. And so you weren't disrupting other people in the work environment. No. You weren't obstructing the flow of traffic. No. Any of the usual sort of disturbing the peace citations. N you left. And yes. you thought, did you think at that time that was it? Yes. Okay. But the next day, I got served with this violation notice, and it says 15064 from the Adams State Police Department. You shall not enter or remain on any Adams State University property or building as you are no longer a student or affiliated with ASU. Any violation of this notice will result in appropriate criminal charges. You are hereby being notified that as of 1-19-15, due to your actions while on Adam State property, you are no longer welcome at Adam State property. You shall not contact, harass, or annoy Adam State University Vice President of Student Affairs, Kenneth Marquez. You shall not communicate with this party via telephone, cell phone, texting, internet, or social media. Uh, they don't mention smoke signals or carrier <laughs> pigeons. Or... No. Okay, so um, this is obviously... Uh, something I can relate to. Uh, for those of you listening who don't know, I was also served a notice banning me from campus for rather unspecified reasons for an indefinite period of time. Very similar language, although for me it didn't mention any particular individual. Although yours basically clearly says you're not to be on Adam State property. Right. Period. Right. The, the policeman handed me, it's a violation notice and the prohibition box is marked. See, and, I'm jealous. That, I'm jealous, this. Jimmy, because you got way more paperwork than I did. I just got a letter, but you have a number of fancy forms there with little boxes to check. Yeah, and I still <laughs> still communicated him. So we don't to... have anything in this case that resembles due process. There was no period where they said, Jimmy, here's what you're accused of. How do you respond? Do you have any, you know, contrary evidence to present to us no. or any kind of an appeal? It was just boom. There was no you're basically from campus. There was no basically my day in court. You've as offended you would put it. the sensibilities of Ken Marquez, and now you're out of here. Yes. Wow. Okay. And so it doesn't. It does it have like a, a one year time frame, or does it say forever and hereforth you were, you know, banished from? There the is no time frame in it at all in the okay. in the state. It doesn't say one year. It doesn't say forever. But uh, it's essentially until further notice, you would expect to be arrested if you set foot onto campus. Yeah. Right. And then about a year later, finally was able to get quote a hearing 
uh, with the Campus Health and Safety Committee. So let me understand, in the year that sort of spans this period of time, were you actively protesting this? Did you kind of walk away and just not deal with that? I wouldn't say it was active. I was okay. still protesting it. I was contacting him every once in a while, maybe every two or three months When you say email. contacting him, you mean Ken? Yes. Doesn't the letter say it, it, it like prohibits you from contacting Ken? Yes. So how would you appeal to a body that has, you know, explicitly prohibited you from communicating with that body? Well, it's it's stated that I the only one I couldn't communicate with was Ken Marquez. Oh. Does but, it list an appeals agent, someone that you're supposed to contact with no. regard to this case? No. Okay. And then finally a year later, here you were, uh, contacting the person you weren't supposed to contact over and over. And he was contacting me, not oh, so saying he was anything. Replying. Yeah, he was replying. What was he not, saying? Well, some of the interesting stuff he would say is, see, like, you are correct that we are not a court. court. However, you are incorrect about what you were issued. You were issued a ASU prohibition order by our university police not a protection order by the court or judge. I have every right to order a prohibition from campus based on the following policy clearly stated in the ASU student handbook, page 19, see below, mm -hmm. you know, and all this kind I'm of stuff. I'm familiar with page 19 of the <laughs> student handbook. However, without being able to quote it chapter and verse, I can tell you that it has a provision for uh, a reasonable notice of the, uh, the violation that you were accused of and an opportunity to uh, respond before you were banned. Yeah. So that, in this case, they uh, issue you the sentence and then later they'll, they'll tell you how you could possibly appeal it. That there's no, it, the, the order is reversed, it sounds like. And there was no, uh, until I finally was able to, you know, convince them and they took it to the safe campus Health and Safety. Which Ken is a member. And it says that uh, the sanctions was based on an incident in the Vice President of Student Affairs Office on January 19th, 2015. You have been compliant with the ban, therefore you may now return to campus. Please understand that you may return to campus for events and continue working with the Veterans Club. However, you shall not be found on campus intoxicated, aggressively confronting, or verbally attacking anyone, the ban will be reinstated and possible charges will be filed. So what's when, this mention of intoxication? It's as though there was a previous well, incident. Well, there was, that's, that's the thing. I said, Kent, when was I ever on campus intoxicated? And he said, oh, the last time we were, you were here, I could smell it on you. And I said, really? Your sniffer must be broke because I have never been intoxicated on campus. Did you have anything to drink on the day that you... No. Did you have anything to drink the night before? No. When was the last time prior to that incident that you had a drink? It would have been the cast party of A Miracle on 34th Street. I think that was... Before I graduated, right. so it was either 08 or 09. And this is kind of a fundamental issue that came up in my case as well, uh, which is, does a public university that taxpayers of Colorado have access to public areas of the campus from concerts, performances, lectures, the university library, etc.? Uh, in your case, you had requested a meeting with Ken Marquez. He allowed you into his office for this purpose. It sounds like you met for less than five minutes. Yes. Uh, and then you were kind of banned on the spot. Now, would he contest your characterization of those events? Like, if I were to talk to him, would he say, Oh, no, you know, Jimmy grabbed me by the arm and he was shouting at me. You know what I mean? I don't think he would say, uh, you know, grab me by the arm. But I think he probably, because he would want to save face, would say uh, he was shouting. He was interfering with the integrity of the institution were there any other witnesses no no just just his secretary yeah and was she um, in the room or was she in yeah she was sitting at her desk okay and was the door open he has a separate office where he can shut the door okay but the door was open i believe it was i don't remember okay um exactly okay a couple days later i went back oh after you were He's essentially allowed back on, on campus, campus. So this said, is a year later yeah you were allowed back on campus, campus. This was what in early 2016. Yes. Well, I have been I have been a part of a uh, San Luis Valley community band, and therefore uh, a few 
rehearsals. We met in the music department, which meant I was on campus. So just to clarify, during that, essentially that year that, that you I were was banned, banned, were you going on campus for the community band that you were a member of? Yes. So you were going on campus during that time? Yes. Did anyone say anything? No. Did you have any concerns that you would be escorted off campus or arrested for violating this letter? A little bit, but after a while it got to be where it's like nobody's here and nobody's really paying attention. So it's like it doesn't matter. So you spent a year in violation of the ban. Nobody confronted you about it. No. Did anyone else know about it to even to even say? Yes, uh, some of the people at church and Joel Schultz did. Because mm. I had told Joel Schultz what had happened. But only the people you told. Yeah. See, and I see, uh, I see this as pretty typical behavior because I think what they wanted to do was kind of intimidate and marginalize you so that you'd go away. And they probably wanted to keep it under the rug because, yeah, it doesn't look good for them that they're banning their alumni from... Right being on campus yeah which which made me question this is well when you you're no longer associated with mm -hmm. the university i thought well, well wait a minute i'm an alumni how am i not associated with the university i graduated from here see your and that, mistake was not donating a lot of money to the foundation right. and being some kind of vip that they would escort back on and, campus and when i went back a couple of days after this one that they you know, they had me meet with him, and he gave me this. I read this, and I went back a couple of days, and I said, You said I can't be here on intoxicated. Whenever have I been on campus intoxicated? And he said, Well, that last time that you were here. So I'm thinking that because I'm Apache, and Apaches and Native Americans are drunk, is why you thought I was intoxicated. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't even know your own necessity. And so it's like... So you confronted him about what you thought were some discriminatory assumptions that he made that yes. because you have a Native American ancestry yeah. that you were under the influence of alcohol, that you have a problem with alcoholism. Yes, and then I asked for definitions of aggressively confronting, mm -hmm. legal definitions, yep. and verbally attacking. I says, okay, can I get legal definitions of those? Were you using profanity? No. Were you speaking I, I, when in I, When I talked to him, yeah. I talked to him like I'm talking to you. Right. There's no need for me to use cuss words. Right. So I'm just having a conversation with right. him. When I used the sarcasm, I was thick with sarcasm. Yeah. I didn't use any cuss words with that sarcasm. I just said what I said, and it made him mad. Yeah, just... I mean, it wasn't a conversation he wanted to be having with you no. at the time. No. Something you sort of touched a nerve, and so then you were banished. I still have never gotten the ne legal definition. Jimmy, why did you want to share this with us today in a podcast episode? What do you want the public to know about what happened to you? I, I guess because, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of this hanging over me. I feel like Ken did wrong. And in a sense, I feel he should pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, because for me to be, quote, banned from the campus, even though I didn't, you know, adhere to it, was... Not necessary. You know, during the day I didn't go on campus because I didn't want to, okay. uh, an incident happen. But the community band that you were in, was that an evening event? Yes. Okay. I'm just wondering, I'm trying to get in your head because I, I'm not sure I would have done what, what you had done, but you, you got the sense that it didn't really matter too much. There wasn't anyone going to enforce this ban in the way that they had essentially claimed they would do? No, because um, I don't think during the evening the police department patrol the campus all the time. Mm. And they don't know what vehicle I drive. Right. Um, it's not like there's a picture with your face on it in yeah. front of every building saying, yeah. watch out for Jimmy. Yeah. Did Ken or anyone else in the administration, were they aware that you were going on campus for these reasons? Uh, no. You didn't make them aware of it? No. So is it possible that this podcast is the first time that people would find out that you spent a year in defiance of this ban yes. and nothing happened to you? Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, this will be the first time that um, the public will know what happened and what I did in, in defiance with it. I don't think any court reasonable court would have put a ban on me. See, this is a good point, and this is probably where... I looked at my fork in the road and I had attorneys tell me, go back on campus, let them try and arrest you. We'll go to court and we'll challenge the uh, 
lawfulness of that arrest. In a way, you were engaged in a kind of civil disobedience. Yeah. Uh, and it was just never, it was never, you were never called on. I mean, essentially, you called their bluff, and it really seems like they were bluffing. Yeah. Are, are things free and clear now? Do you feel like all this is behind you? D no, because they gave me another one of these papers that I still have on me. You get a lot of fan mail from Adam State. <laughs> and on that, they removed the intoxicated part. Oh. But I still can't verbally attack or aggressively confront. So it sounds like because you questioned Ken on the issue of intoxication, and probably because you mentioned that you thought it was because of your Apache heritage. Yeah. That, that they thought it would be politically unwise, maybe even legally unwise, to, to just cast that aspersion upon you. If you didn't take a breathalyzer, they have no way of actually legally prove you didn't mm, no. you didn't you know engage in any kind of like sobriety test that no. you failed so it was just one person's idea of how you smelled i assume you were like arm's length away from ken that you weren't up in his face where he could smell your breath he was behind his desk okay i was sitting in front of it how big is his desk it's probably about the same distance uh, that me and you are right now right so we're we're probably about 4 or 5 feet apart yeah, okay. so I, I'm not quite sure. I don't smell your breath. I don't I'm think you smell I'm not quite sure me. how he would have been able to smell any right. alcohol on me right. at that point. Was your speech slurred or anything no. like that? No. Uh, for him to understand when I said there, there, there had been no incident of gunfire when on or near the had. campus. Right. And then he said, are you trying to get my goat? Mm -hmm. He never in person thought that you were intoxicated. He never no. asked you about it. No, he like never something... said, are you drunk or anything like that. He never said that. Mm -hmm. He just said, are you trying to get my goat? And I said, well, I just think the students must feel safe. And that's when he asked me to leave. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of after the fact that intoxicated was added. Yes. And then you're saying later, a year later, when they issued you a new letter, they'd omitted the word intoxicated. Well, this one was the year after the incident. T two days later, they... Uh, a few days later, they uh, gave me another one that said they'd left the intoxicated out, but still left in the verbally confronting and, and mm -hmm. that. And it's like... Do you feel comfortable going back on campus now? I don't know. I haven't gone on there. I thought about wanting to go to a, a football game, but I haven't... Well, okay, I think the last thing that I want to step back and talk about is, you know, this idea that both in my case, when they, they had to repeatedly emphasize that I was a non-employee, that, that I was a non-student, and that all this was justified because I had no material basis to be on the ASU campus. And I'm like, wait a minute, I just worked there for four years. I grew up here. Uh, at present, I was trying to run the film festival that was scheduled for... The, literally the week that I was banned from campus, um, as they were cutting off my email, as they were telling me I couldn't go to administrative meetings. And in your case, you're an alumni that you would think they would value, you know, in a small town like Alamosa, that community members who get a degree from Adam State can continue to participate in campus life um, and things of that nature. Uh, but it's like the first thing they'll say is, nope, you're not a student, you're not an employee, we have every right to treat you however we wish. If they didn't like the t-shirt that you're wearing or any reason at all, mm -hmm. or no reason at all, mm -hmm. they could just say, I have the authority to ban you from campus. And you spent the next year essentially defying that to continue in the ways that you'd participate with Adam State in the community band, and that there was no issue with that. Yeah. Right. Right. Anything else you want people to know about your situation? If this happened to someone else, what advice would you give them? What would you maybe have done differently, if, if anything? I would have openly defied it, said, if, if you've got grounds, then arrest me. I want my day in court because I think what, what you did uh, was bogus and not legal. That's what I would have done differently. You certainly aren't the only person, by the way, other than myself, that Adam State has banned. During the discovery phase of, uh, of our legal proceedings, we asked for a list, and they provided a list of people who had been banned from campus. And it actually appears that they make a somewhat regular um, practice of banning people from campus without, you know, without going to a court of law, without you know, seeking a restraining order or 
uh, pressing charges, filing charges, anything of that nature. So we're probably not as uncommon, you know, you and I, uh, as we might think. Um, but the university seems to, at least until recently, uh, made, a, made a practice of this. And my hope, it's no secret, is that based on the kind of publicity that, that I wanted Adam State to get in this regard, uh, I hope that they think twice about continuing to ban people kind of uh, on a whim without any legal proceedings that really should accommodate someone who's a member of the public going to a public university. You, you know, you can't just be banned from a public space like a university campus at large. You were engaged in uh, what, what they would want to be community relations. They, you'd think that Adam State would want alumni to stay in touch with Adam State and to take a concern in, in the runnings of the university. And so when you saw what happened with, with Joel, you felt that that was wrong. You wanted to express your opinion about that. You did it in a way that Ken didn't like. And uh, then you were, you were gone, or you were told you were gone. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for telling your story and joining us today. Thank you.